In this video, we will be discussing and showing how to do the following procedures. With a good grasp of these, you will be able to deal with over 90% of epistaxis patients. In patients with nosebleeds, we are aiming to treat the bleeding site and stop the bleeding. If for any reason this is not possible, our fallback objective is to at least document how far back inside the nose the bleeding site is and on what side. This information will prevent unnecessary prolonged admissions and theatre episodes that might be based on limited or inaccurate information. Initially, correct first aid technique is very important and is one of the main reasons for prolonged epistaxis due to poor understanding in both the public and within healthcare staff. Ensure the patient pinches the soft lower part of the nose and leans forward. After around 15 minutes, or if nasal pressure is obviously not controlling things, we can use other techniques to slow the bleeding. Cofenolcaine, or blue box spray, contains local anaesthetic and adrenaline, which helps slow the bleeding and acts as decongestion. Before applying this, it is important that all blood is cleared from the nose, by suction or sometimes blowing the nose clear. You can either use cofenolcaine as a spray or soak cotton balls to allow more direct use on suspected bleeding areas. At this point, you should have identified at least which side the bleeding is coming from. Once the view is improved, you can use a pair of thudicum speculum and a good headlight to try to identify the bleeding point. This allows a good view whilst also protecting the anterior nares during suction or subsequent quartery. In over 90% of cases, it is found in Littles area, an area found on the anterior aspect of the nasal septum and subsequently easily visualised. If you have found a suspected bleeding point, then you may either apply further cofenolcaine to the area to slow the bleeding and or cauterise using silver nitrate. Cauterise the vessel as shown. You may be required to cauterise the area just around the bleeding site to reduce the blood flow to the area. After cautery, it may take a while for the bleeding to stop and reactionary bleeding may occur. This is okay and is expected. Simply, the bleeding may require further periods of first aid application and or cofenolcaine soaked gauze. Further cautery to the area may also be required or procoagulant dressing can be applied like Surgicel. In the vast majority of cases, this will settle the epistaxis, in which case the patient can be sent home with advice to avoid hot drinks, first aid technique advice, and a course of naseptin nasal cream. If all has been performed and the bleeding is still ongoing at a significant rate, then nasal packing may be required. However, this should not be common and is used as a last resort. We always use a rapid rhino if the decision is made to pack the nose. This is because they are easy to insert, cause less mucosal trauma and pressure can be adapted as necessary. Ensure to remove the protective blue sleeve and then soak the rapid rhino in body temperature water. This will activate the pack and allow it to be inserted much more easily. Once soaked, insert the pack along the floor of the nose, trying to keep along the nasal septum and aiming vertically for the level of the ear, not the top of the head. The pack should be inserted easily and should not be forced. The full pack should enter the nose comfortably as shown. Subsequently, placing air in the pack to apply pressure to the bleeding point, inflating to a volume needed to control the bleeding whilst avoiding undue discomfort or overinflation. Post application, some blood stain discharge is normal, but ensure the patient is still not bleeding in the oropharynx, in which case a larger posterior pack may be required or a second pack. If a pack is required, call ENT post application and a decision will be made regarding whether the patient can go home with the pack in situ, an ambulatory pack, with follow up the next day, or whether the requ patient requires admission. 